Hey everybody, welcome back to Poison Jam Builds a Base. Today we're going to be putting together the JBK1 bass from Solo Guitars. Here we have our JBK1 bass. It has been finished with a combination of walnut grain filler, walnut dye, and then a true oil finish put down on top of that. I put layers of true oil down consistently for the span of like a week, and then it's had a time to cure for about seven to 10 days after the final coat. We also uh, did the neck and also a video about this, which I am particularly proud of. Here's one for the good, good camera. This is a custom pick guard I made out of wood because I did not like the red tortoiseshell one that it came with. So I made a custom wooden one, which I thought is pretty, pretty cool. All right, so we have a few major jobs that need to be done. Uh, and I think I'm gonna do the most difficult, which is going to be setting the pickups in place and doing the electronics. I have to feed the ground wire through, tape it in place, solder the ground wire onto here. And then we need to put the pickups in place and do the soldering work there. I'm gonna to have to bring up a wiring diagram at some point uh, for a reference for this. I'm a little worried about having my soldering iron on this fitted sheet. <laughs> Uh, I work with uh, the barest minimum of space. I don't have a garage. I think the first thing I'm going to do is feed through this uh, ground wire. Got that run through there. I'm going to tape that down with a bit of frog tape to keep it in place. Frog tape. And make sure it has good reach to be soldered on. I think we're good. It's a little bit tight but we're gonna get the pickups set in place first. So where are my screws for my pickups? Here they are. I'm just gonna dump those out there. So for each of these pickups, we have a combination of a screw and a spring. Uh, blue pickup is the neck pickup. Oh, no, wrong way. Silly me. All right, so I believe this one. I think we're good. I think we're good. That makes me super happy. All right, look at that. Look at that, everybody. Um, that is gonna be my next goal now is to tack that pick guard down, right in place. with this. I am a little concerned about how well the uh, control panel is going to fit, but I do believe the next thing I'm going to do is get the other pickup in place. This one needs to be fed through a small cavity. So let's feed this through here. Uh, thankfully, it's a it's a fairly large hole. Okay, and now I'm gonna gently lay that there. We're gonna position all the screws that need to be positioned. 
I'm even being sure to lay it down in a spot that will later be covered up by the bridge when it's installed. Awesome. So drop our springs down. Thankfully, the magnetism of the pick, pick, uh, pickups themselves actually kind of keeps all the screws in place very nicely. Awesome. All right, we're, we're, we got one of the major jobs done now. Uh, the next one is probably the most nerve wracking and definitely one of the ones uh, that's going to be difficult to do with my shaky hands. So let's get the soldering iron plugged in. I will need to wait for this to heat up a little bit and I will probably have a seat while I'm soldering. So all the wiring on this side is done already. I just need to, so yeah, we have to solder each of the pickups to their respective volume pots and we have to solder the ground to the ground. <laughs> Three solder points. Thankfully, this is not a particularly difficult soldering job. So we've got more solder points than I realized. Think of each of these go to a ground connector as well as to their live signal wire. I need better tools for this. My snippers are uh, kind of a bit dulled. I guess I can pick that one up. Yeah, I'm gonna use the solder they gave me instead of the solder, the cheap, the cheap solder I have. See, I don't, uh, this is like a three body pro problem for me always, is soldering here. I need to hold it down. Okay, finally did. Ah, there we go. Better, better, better. All right. And now, uh, the one I was most afraid of. So I'm gonna put that up there, reposition this as best I can. understanding is the ground wire from the actual ground goes soldered here. I apologize. I apologize for that rather shoddy uh, solder job. Okay, well the soldering's done, which was the most difficult part of this whole process. So now I can turn off my solder iron and get that fire hazard out of the way. <sighs> soldering is always nerve wracking to me. Now we're gonna fit this down into its control socket and hope to God that it fits with this pick guard. And hope to God that, it, oh yeah, I'm good. It didn't pull it through, thank God. And this out, I'm probably gonna shield all the cavities with copper tape, just hasn't arrived yet. Person. 
frog tape removed. We're gonna fix the bridge before we move on. So I don't want too much of this showing, literally just enough so that the bridge acts as a ground. You don't want it lifting up the bridge, but I also don't want to lose it. There we go. I think that's a good compromise. Ground wire doesn't have to be soldered to the bridge. Uh, it's usually just laid in direct contact with the bridge. So I think we're actually, no, we're not quite done with the body yet. So we'll install the strap blocks. Well, not technically strap blocks. Those are Gucci, those are Gucci things I can put on future builds. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna set this aside for a little bit. I can clean up some stuff. We're getting closer to being able to play this thing. Now let's work on this neck. So I'm gonna start off by putting the bushings in. A oh, string tree, right. So, all right, here we go. Oh. Okay, we got them all in now. And they're all flush, actually. I'm lucky. All right. So I'm gonna position these, make sure they all fit properly. Yep, we're good to go. And for the curious, we have a Poison Jam logo on it. Uh, that's gonna be the style for these as they go out. I'm going to give them a signature and label them. This is Poison Jam 1. So if I become a famous luthier or something, uh, I'm not counting my eggs before they hatch, but uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll be in possession of a highly valuable piece of technology. All right, let's start. works just fine. Just gonna be careful. I know these ones are prone to breaking. You don't want to over tighten them because then you'll be stuck drilling pilot holes to try to get an old broken screw out.
think we're gonna leave it there. I'm happy with that. These are mostly lined up. There we go. All right, time for the fun. Oh wait, no, 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 let's not forget the... Oh no, huh. They don't have a pilot hole drilled for that string tree. Yeah, and it wasn't like that out of the box either. Hmm. Yeah, and there's nothing about it in the assembly that points it out. I'm probably gonna have to put the strings on first and then put the string retainer. <clears throat> All right, so it's time to attach the neck to the body, ooh. Flip this up. Assembled. So I'm gonna get these tools out of the way so I don't accidentally dent up my nice finish. All right, yeah. I need this Allen key, this screw, and I don't need this. I don't need this, but whoever wins this will get the base. Now it's time to string it. Oh, the fretboard's gotten a little smudgy in the process. So now we have an assembled um, base minus the string retainer, which I'm which there was no pilot hole drilled for, so I'm gonna have to just eyeball it, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so we're gonna have to string. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Now let's take this madness ball of strings apart. These aren't fancy strings. They're the ones that came with the kit. So. String retainer needs to cover both of these, just slightly, essentially just slightly southeast of uh, the 
the second. All right, we got the string retainer installed in a place that doesn't obscure the Poison Jam logo. All right. And now, I guess it's time to do the other setup stuff. So we're going to do the basic setup, string height adjustment, and truss rod adjustments. We're also going to need to do the intonation before I even bother to play it. The strings stretch always, so you need to go back through. For multiple reasons, the tuning of the strings will change a little bit as you play with it and tighten up things. Uh, the strings will introduce bowing into the neck, which will change the spacing, which means you need to re go back and retune it a few times. All right, so there we go. Now, these string heights abs are absurdly high now, and so are the pickup heights still quite high. So we'll adjust those before we move on. Uh, well, if I go any further, I'm going to strip the screw. So I guess that's as good as it gets. I usually have the opposite problem where I can't get the pickups high enough in their slots. These ones I can't get low enough. So let's just check the bowing in the neck now before we go on. Okay, uh, I, I should tell you guys, this is a wide angle lens. So this is gonna really exaggerate the effect uh, from your guys' perspective. So I'm gonna sight it myself. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna look down the neck from the base to the neck and make sure that there's a, a slight curve, it's flat, somewhat flat or to a slight curve. All right, now, so, yeah, we've got a slight bowing in the neck, which means I could tighten it and pull some tension back into it, which I probably should. There's no way to place a truss rod that's easy to adjust while the strings are also there, is there? So I like my fretboards as flat as I can get them while still being playable. And this is about as good as I think I can get this one. Get this back in tune. And then we're gonna check the intonation. That's the next step. The bass keeps scooching up as I film, so you guys keep missing like the headstock action as I adjust stuff. So, uh, actually, I'm gonna work on the string height adjustment. So unfortunately, I do lack a string feeler um, and a, a height feeler to get the proper string height. I used this, which I cut off at exactly one zero millimeters so that I can try to eyeball it as best as possible. Uh, so I'm going to be going by the fender guides for J bases on what I should set the string height to just as a starting point. Measured at the 17th fret. On a 12 inch radius, we want about 2.4 millimeters, which I'm sure this is, this is far above. Yeah, that's, this is about twice that. So we're going to want to lower the string height. But to do that, you take screw counterclockwise. On the bridge, using the tiniest truss rod in the world. 
Low, low action is a is a luxury of a particularly good um, quality base too. So there are limits to what you might be able to get out of a kit like this. So for a 12 inch radius fretboard, which I believe this is, you're not gonna have much of a height adjustment for each of these strings because there's, um, because there's not much of a height difference in the fretboard as it curves across the surface. But generally the middle strings will be slightly higher than your outside strings. So let's get this back into tune again before we continue on. So for the idea about intonation is you want to put this in tune and then you want to check that when you hold the octave down, uh, which is your 12th fret, you want to check that when you hold the octave down, it is also in tune. Uh, there's also, you could check this using this 12th fret harmonic. You can check the 12th fret harmonic, but there's, uh, there's various ways to go about this. My favorite is to just check the open and compare it to the 12th fret. Because I physically understand what's going on here. So the idea is if it's sharp, when you're fretting the 12th fret, if it's sharp, that means this string from here to here is too short and you need to move this back because longer strings lower the frequency. So that means you want to tighten the saddle and pull, pull the saddle height back towards the bridge. All right, and then when you do that, that'll affect the tuning of the entire string. So you have to pull the string back into tuning and then once again, check your 12th fret. And we've almost fixed the intonation on this string already. We do need to pull it back towards the bridge just another turn or so. A little bit more. So it's still coming in sharp. I guess I have to do more dramatic adjustment. So let's do a bit more of a heavy duty adjustment here. Pull this string back a lot. All right, and there you have it. We actually have the first string intonated now. That E string is now intonated. We have ensured that the open string is the same note, pitch, as the 12th fret. That's all intonation is. Make sure that the octaves are split evenly between the lower half and the upper half of the register on your fretboard. Now we basically want to do the same thing for each of the rest of the strings.
Oh, we're good now. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, and now just the final string, which is surprisingly in tune. Oh, well, wouldn't you know it? Already intonated, I don't need to adjust it. So I am gonna have to do a manual adjustment from a playing position, but that marks the end of the setup part, right? Cool, huh? So the bass is actually, at this point, the bass is assembled. Ready to be played. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching me do the last steps of constructing this bass for the Poison Jam Builds a Bass blog. This was the Solo Guitars JBK1 Build a Bass project. I made my own custom, I made my own custom pick guard for it, and we wood burned the logo into it, and we applied a walnut uh, dye and shrew oil finish, and it's ready finally to be played. So that's the next step. Tune in to the Poison Jam stream on Sundays, Tuesdays and Thursdays.